What is going on guys? Today we are back with another video. We are up here on Leech Lake today catching just a pile of walleyes and uh, it's myself. We got my good buddy Lou behind the camera right now and uh, we're going to go into some jig fishing tips and techniques. Now jigs the number one producing walleye lure of all time. It works everywhere all times a year pretty much and fall is just a classic jigging time of year. Jigging live bait, jigging plastics and there's a lot of different ways you can fish a jig. You know you can fish obviously your live bait and minnow like we are today. You can fish just the standard jig and a plastic. There's a million different kinds of plastics. So when is the right time to do something like troll a jig, cast a jig, pitch a jig, twitch a jig. There's a million different ways to do this. That's what we're going to go into today out here and uh, we might start Start with maybe a walleye catch or two and then go into the some, some of this hardcore information. I can tell you this, with how many different ways there are to fish a jig, certain days and certain bodies of water, you will catch way more fish fishing it specifically one way than you will a different way. So stay tuned, we're going to catch a few walleyes out here and go into everything you guys need to know on jig fishing. A lot of these early fall, late fall walleyes up here in northern Minnesota, Wisconsin, all across the walleye fishing world. fish on right there and you can see how effective that is using the live bait and like I said you know this there's definitely a time for something that covers a lot more water and there's definitely a time for a presentation that kind of you don't want to be covering a lot of water with and that's exactly what we're doing right now not pitching at huge piles of fish spread out over large areas we're pitching at real tight schools of walleyes and almost just trying to leave that jig right right in their face and there's another nice fish right there and you guys have seen us film plenty of things on the plastics but today in particular definitely a live bait seems to be producing best all right so today we're obviously fishing a jig in a minnow now the key to this presentation is obviously the minnow is always a productive way to fish in the fall generally in the fall we're fishing either fatheads or suckers on here or shiner or something like that but you can put any, you know, any kind of live bait on here today what we're doing specifically is we're driving around with the big motor or the trolling motor and the reason it's so effective to do this with a minnow is because a lot of times i'm short pitching i'm pitching like 15 20 feet off the side of my boat to a school of three to ten fish that's moving around on some of these big sand flats. Now, once I get that bait in there and I can see the fish on my 360, a screenshot that looks something like this right here when I pitch out to them. Well, the reason this is so effective just twitched is because what I don't want to do is uh, move this bait very linear through the fish. What I don't want to do is get it in there and do these big jig strokes like this and I'll be out of that school in a second. So what we're doing is we're seeing those fish, we're making that real short pitch to them, we're letting that jig get all the way down to bottom and I'm almost just slack line twitching it like this. Not really doing a whole lot of reeling in. So the whole time this bait's out there, it's in the fish. And while I'm fishing, I'm watching my screens, I'm watching my side imaging, I'm watching my 360 for these fish. Now if all of a sudden I cast out and I twitch this bait twice and these fish are over here, then I know obviously I don't keep twitching, I just reel in and make that, make that next cast. But most of the time what's happened is we're pitching out and we're almost just fishing it kind of like this. Just getting that jig kind of hopping and just coming just a short ways off bottom but staying right in that zone. And most of the time we're getting that bite, we're, they're not really doing that big thump bite, but most of the time you're just getting that mushy heavy rod tip, reel down and set the hook. So if you were to do something like fish a plastic in this situation, what would end up happening in, short, in real shallow water like we're in, you'd cast out, you get in those fish, and just naturally with a plastic, you have to move the rod a lot more and incorporate a lot more action into that bait to get a bite. So I'd pop this bait a few times and I'd already be through that pot of fish. So you fish in something like a jig and a minnow that I don't have to do a lot with the rod. If I were to take the plastic and do something like this, we wouldn't probably get many bites at all today. But fishing that minnow where I can keep that thing in those fish a long time is a super productive way to fish. Oh yeah, right there. Real tight. This is the kind of situation where if you were trying to fish a plastic, you'd have to move that bait way too much, especially when we're pitching this tight to the boat like this. 
and I'm basically just almost slack line twitching this jig. In the second here I'm gonna get bit. Or one of us should. Yeah, just like that right there. <laughs> and that's how effective that is. Something you could never do with the plastic. Now if these fish were way more spread out, that's what we'd be doing. But the way we're fishing where we're just really picking apart these real tight wads of fish, this is pretty much an unmatched way to do it. And there's some smaller plastics you might be able to get away with, but with how slow I'm trying to move this jig, this is absolutely the way to go. Huge sand flat, roaming small pods of fish, and uh, just running the big motor around until we see them, pitching right into them, simultaneously hitting spot lock. And man, this fish really choked this jig. <laughs> we'll get them popped off here. All right, there we go. All right, there we go. Another nice fall walleye on the jig and live bait combination. Just a super effective way to fish all fall. And obviously when you're kind of doing this, you know, sonar plus, you know, the short range pitching thing, absolutely the way to fish. All right, so when is the right time to fish a plastic? Well, plastics obviously catch a ton of fish. And most time I'd honestly prefer fishing a plastic. One of my favorite ones right here is a Kalen's Jerk Minnow Jr. And we're just putting that on a quarter ounce head. Now, in a situation where you're fishing a big spot and fish are just kind of spread out all throughout that spot or you have these big pods of fish that are kind of loosely scattered around then a lot of times something with the plastic's great because i can cast it a mile i never have to have any downtime rebaiting and i can fish it fast and aggressive and i don't have to worry about that that minnow coming off and i can cover a lot of water with the plastic now this is a jerk minnow junior so i kind of fish this a little bit snappier like this you know same goes for a swim bait if you're fishing a swim bait a lot of times i'll do something that looks like like this right here a little bit more of a pull when you pop it up but uh, you know plastics are great for really in a spots where you're trying to cover just a ton of water and a lot of times you know we'll do this especially in big weed areas big rock flats a lot of these areas where we're maybe trying to find fish with our presentation today most of the fishing we're doing is on a big sand flat and I can see all those fish. So if we were to go to like, let's say a big rock flat or a big weed area where I can't see those fish quite as clean, a great thing to do would be start out with a jig and a plastic and just throw it as far as you can and work that bait and get it moving very linearly back to the boat, covering a lot of water. If you were to try to do this with a jig and a minnow, you'd be going through a lot of minnows and it'd just be tougher to cover the same distance of water. So jig and plastic absolutely has its time. Some days, you know, you can kind of go back and forth depending on the situation and how aggressive fish are. One thing I always say when guys are fishing plastics is the reason most people don't have success fishing plastics is because they try to fish it like they would a jig in a minnow. They end up doing something that looks like this right here. And this does not get a whole lot of bites when you're fishing a plastic. You have to incorporate that action and especially to clear the water. You Generally, you have to do some kind of triggering aspect with your rod. And what I mean by that is most of the time it's either a snap or like just like this. I'm not pulling this bait very far off bottom, but it's very triggering to get bites. And uh, you know, the other thing you can do is kind of a, a fast pull like this, where you're getting a little bit more hop up off the bottom. Now it's obviously fall right now, and most of us are doing plenty of fall walleye fishing. And the colder this water gets, one tip I've always I've always had fishing plastics this time of year is something I used to do in uh, super early in the spring a lot, like in Green Bay or these areas where you could fish when the water is just super cold. And as fall cools down, you could still be really productive with plastics. What I try to do is almost never pick this jig very far off bottom. So I'll almost do something that starts looking like this, where I'm almost just skipping that jig across the bottom, popping it enough to get that little bit of a reaction bite, but when the water's cold, those fish don't wanna hunt that water column for a jig, I'm just popping it like this, and almost never really getting it off bottom. Almost fishing this thing on a slack line, where I'm still covering a lot of water, you can see I'm almost always reeling, but I'm not pulling that jig very far off bottom at all, but still keeping it snappy enough to get bites. So like I said, there's definitely a time to be fishing plastics and they're obviously always very productive in the fall. It more so depends on that fish's attitude and how those fish are set up in an area. Oh yeah, right out here again. There's a fish. Man, yep, it's just such an effective way to fish. 
You guys can see how little we're moving this thing. Oh, he's not, it's not too bad of a fish. Making a lot of casts, a lot of short casts to fish. It's absolutely the key to fishing this way. There's no need when we're picking apart these smaller pods to be making these huge bomb casts. It's just a lot of this short range, real tight jig pitching, and it's a super effective way to fish. And we are just catching a pile of these walleyes up here on Leech Lake today. Jig and minnow, using technology to put your bait right in their face, and just kind of slow twitching that bait. There we go. All right, jig weight. Jig weight's super important when you're fishing in the fall. And uh, anytime the water's cold, fall rate's always important. So um, that's always something to think about. Either it's either a triggering quality or it's, you know, when you're fishing real negative fish, slowing way down with a lighter jig can be productive. And uh, generally the sizes I fish the most are eighth ounce, quarter ounce, and three eighth ounce. And uh, I got three of them right here. And most time all the jigs I'm using are either the uh, um, Acme Google Eyes or the Pendu jigs right here. All good jigs for either plastics or live bait. And uh, eighth ounce is probably the one i use most of the time when i'm fishing 10 feet and less in the fall today we would not be able to get by with it because our line would get a huge bow in it with the amount of wind we got and it'd end up just sweeping and we never touch bottom so like i said today we're fishing quarter ounce and um like I said, we're pitching out and most of the time I like using quarters in anywhere from 10 to 20 feet of water is generally key. Now, sometimes if you're dealing with really negative fish, going to something like an eighth ounce, even if you're fishing 20, 30 feet of water and just letting that thing just slow fall down there can be a super effective way to catch neutral fish. Or another thing you could do in the fall is, uh, you know, you could take kind of like a bigger minnow and I don't know how many big minnows we got in here anymore. Well, you could take like a bigger walleye sucker or a bigger shiner or something like this and instead of most of the time I'll take them and hook them right through the skull well a lot of times if you're fishing real negative fish you can take them and nose hook them like that and then at this on an eighth ounce jig this minnow will kind of swim that jig around and you just kind of fish in a way where you're just almost reeling it in when you get a really slow and finessey bite but most of the time I'm jig fishing I'm taking it and I like to run the hook right through the mouth of the minnow and up through the head now you're gonna lose or you're gonna kill every minnow you use like that, but that's all right because the, you incorporate the action um, when you're jigging. You're not reliant upon that minnow. But kind of going back to jig weight, um, you know, generally if you're in that kind of less than 15 feet of water, 10 feet, less than 10 feet of water, like most of us probably are when we're doing a lot of the shallow water fall fishing. If it's real calm out, eighth ounce. If it's kind of windy out, quarter ounce. And going deeper than that, most of the time I'm fishing three eighths or half ounce. So jig weight's super important. Um, you know, a lot of times if you're dealing with really negative fish, and this happens a lot, the colder the water gets. If you're dealing with those really negative fish and you got a quarter ounce on and you're pitching in 10, 12, 15 feet of water, go down in jig weight. Same can go if you're fishing a really staying flowage system and you're fishing up in six feet of water, four feet of water, three feet of water, and you find yourself not getting bites on an eighth ounce, go down to even a lower a lower size, like a 16th, and just let that minnow kind of do the work. So in the fall, as the water cools, always be thinking about jig weight because it does play a big role in how many fish you're ultimately gonna catch. All right, guys, well, that is gonna wrap it up for today's video. Caught a pile of walleyes today. We were kind of wondering what to film and uh, you know a lot of it's been so repetitive because we're just out here catching a pile of walleyes every time we come out and i uh, wanted to throw in a little bit of information about kind of what we're doing because our rod locker is pretty full right now but um, you can come out here and fish a jig a lot of different ways and if you're moving the bait way too fast through those fish a lot of days you're just gonna you're not gonna have the same results so some days you could make these bomb casts work jigs really fast fish plastics fish you know work a jig however you want and be productive today the absolute key is uh, kind of dissecting these pot, small pockets of fish, keeping your jig out, just twitching it and keeping your bait in that zone. And that's absolutely what we're doing today. So I appreciate you guys watching this video. Hopefully it was beneficial for you. Um, we'll be back out here tomorrow. I think we're gonna film a little bit more like a regular full length YouTube video tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. And I uh, appreciate you guys watching. If you're not yet, please subscribe and we'll see you next time.